Yeah. 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 Seches Kiddushin, Dav Tesva, 15a. So we said that, uh, yeah, we're trying to uh, figure out um, uh, what the source is that an Ebed Ivri uh, can be uh, acquired with, um, with, with money. And uh, then we uh, said, that, yeah, we know that it's true if a non-Jew uh, should buy uh, a Jewish slave. It says mikesef uh, miknaso, and uh, then we said, how do we know if it's true that if the Jew is sold to a, a Jewish slaveholder? And uh, so we derived that uh, from uh, Amaha Ivriya, and uh, we said, how do we uh, derive the same thing for Eved Ivri? So there's some sort of a hekesh between Amaha Ivriya and Eved Ivri. Um, however, that a hekesh is only applicable to a case, thank you, where a Bezdin sold somebody into slavery because that they stole something. How do we know that the same thing is true with respect to a person who sells himself, um, that uh, you can buy an Eved Ivri who's selling himself with Kesef? So we said we have a Gzeir shava of Sakhir Sakhir, because it says with respect to a person who is sold into slavery, it says, Ki sachir, abad shanim. It's a parsha in Devarim. And then at the end of a Yikra, which speaks about a person who sells himself, it says, So the Gemara had said, Oh, that's all fine and good for the whoever holds by this Gzeir Shav of Sachir Sachir. But if you don't hold by the Gzeir Shav of Sachir Sachir, so then you need to derive it from another uh, source that uh, we compare um, with the word Bab. We connect uh, the parshios of somebody who gets uh, sold. Um, with um, somebody who sells himself uh, to an Obed uh, Kohavim and somebody who sells himself uh, to a Yisrael. So since we know that if you sell yourself to an Obed Kohavim, you can be acquired with money. So too, if you sell yourself to a Jew, you can be acquired with money. So then we're trying to figure out, we said, okay, it's fine and good, but whoever holds by the Gzeir Shava, but not so whoever doesn't hold by the Gzeir Shava. So we're trying to figure out who doesn't hold by this Gzeir Shava between Machu Bezdin and Mokher Atzmo of Sakhir Sakhir. So we said, oh, maybe um, uh, this would be uh, this uh, would be uh, the the opinion of the Tanakama in a bigger brisa that has uh, four differences according to the Tanakama between somebody who sells himself and somebody who sold by Bezdin. So we see that we differentiate as opposed to Rabbi Eliezer who does not uh, differentiate, he must hold by the Gzeir Shav, and the Tanakhama doesn't hold by the Gzeir Shav. So we said, no, the Tanakhama holds by the Gzeir Shav. It's just that there are special psukim that indicate that when it comes to these four different areas, there's a difference between a mocher a person who sells himself into slavery, and a machu and somebody who sold by bezdin. And the four different areas were whether you can sell yourself for more than six years, that's only a mocher atzmo, according to the mm -hmm. Tanakhama, um, whether if uh, an evidently wants to stay on more than six years and have a, his ear pierced um, by the door uh, so that he stays until the oval year, um, according to the Tanakhama, that only applies to someone who's sold by Bezdin. Um, so too, with respect to Hanukkah, of getting severance, that only applies uh, to somebody who's sold by the Bezdin. And so too, whether a, the master can give over a Shifcha Kneinis for the Evid to live with at night and bear children, so that only applies to Mahru Bezdin, according to the Tanakhama. So we went through the first two categories. Somebody who sold, who can sell him, and Mahru, uh, that, a, that uh, a, a person who sells himself can sell himself for more than six years, but not a Mahru Bezdin. And we went through the second category that um, uh, with respect to, to Nirza, only a Mahru Bezdin um, it receives, it can become a Nirza, get his ear uh, pierced. Um, but uh, not to somebody who uh, sells himself. And now we're up to, and we explain the special drashos that the Tanakama had, and now we're up to the next two categories to explain why is it that the Tanakama has these drashos differentiating between a machubes and a mocharazmus. It's nine lines down, and that's the maitaima at the very, very end of the line, if I understand, if I understood from you correctly where you left off. Yes. He doesn't get the shit, right? That was the last thing that we mentioned. The last thing we mentioned, was it that the Mahu then gets a Shivka Kninus, or can be given a Shivka Kninus, and the Mokharatsman does not receive a Shivka Kninus? Right, okay. 
So, so it doesn't do. And so it, does the, the Shemitah does ne, never does not cut off anybody. Only Yobo cuts off. Shemitah doesn't cut off. Okay, so my time, uh, the Tanakama, what's uh, the reasoning of the Tanakama? Um, uh, who says that if your person sells himself into slavery, so he doesn't receive severance. So because it only says, the Pasuk says, only with respect to Mahlu Bezdin. This is a Pasuk in Devarim. There are two parashas to talk about Mahlu Bezdin. One is at the beginning of Mishpatim and one is in Devarim. Uh, Hanek Tanik, in, in Parshas Re, Hanek Tanik Lo. It says that you give servants to him, meaning Lo, to give to him, but not to a person uh, who sells himself into slavery. The Edoch, and according to Rabbi Eliezer, um, homie by lay, no, I need that, that pasuk to teach me low below the Yarsha. That if a person uh, serves as an evidivi and he gets uh, to the end of his term and then the master dies, so then the heirs do not have to give him seven. So the Yarsha. Wait, why should that be? Yarsha my low, so here call your Rahman, a maskir pulaso, the Yarsha. He's referred to as a sakir, as a worker. So a worker, uh, so if uh, the uh, person who hired him dies before he pays his wages, so the heirs are responsible. So the heirs are responsible. If there is a din of severance, so the heirs have to pay the severance. That can't be the exclusion. Rather, the exclusion must be that it means that, that um, when it comes a time to pay severance, so the severance has to be paid directly to uh, the Ebed. If the Ebed um, had owed money to a creditor, so the master can't say, well, I owe you money and you owe money to the creditor, so I'll pay the creditor directly. No, that doesn't apply in this case. That's the din of Rabbi Shibuda de Rabbi Nassim, the transitive principle of indebtedness that doesn't apply to this case. So that's how. That's what, uh, that's what Rabbi Eliezer um, it derives from the word loan. We dispute on Biyama to Rabbi Nassim, Normally, we would all like Rabbi Nason that there's a transitive principle of indebtedness. The Tanya Rabbi Nason, Minayin Lenosha B'chaveri Mana B'chaveri B'chaveri Minayin Shmosim Yisevin Hosin Lezev. A owes B money, B owes C money. So how do we know that C can collect directly from A and we eliminate the middleman? Talmud Lomar, because it says in the parish of Asham Gizelos, Benosam La'ashir Asham Lo. You got to give the money ultimately to the one who lost it. So us alone, la fuke. So therefore, the word lo says Rabbi Eliezer, it doesn't come to exclude the case of mocher atzmo, but rather it comes to exclude um, the case of shibuda de Rabbi Nassim, that we don't apply in the case of a slave, that he has to get his hanaki, has to get his uh, severance, even if uh, the money uh, is owed by him to a creditor, then that's his responsibility. He'll take the money, he'll pay the creditor. What about the Tanakama? How does he derive this din? He never holds like Rabbi Nassim. So it's just, so therefore, he does not need the special exclusion. So there's a long tosis here. Does that mean that since we generally hold like the Tanakama uh, in all of these halachos, that we don't hold like the Shibuda the Rabbi Nassim? So he gives arguments pro and con. And then at the end, he says, no, and really, we hold like the Tanakama in general. We hold like the Tanakama with respect to this principle. We do hold like Shibuda the Rabbi Nassim, but not when it comes to workers. When it comes to workers, that's what we're talking about here. A slave is like a worker, he's like a sahir. So then even if the worker owes somebody else money and you are the uh, person who hired the worker, you don't give the third party creditor the money, you give the money to the worker and then the worker pays the creditor himself. When it comes to other types of uh, transactions, uh, A, loan money to B and B, loan money to C. So then A can collect directly from C. That's with respect to a loan transaction. But when it's a worker, so the worker has to get paid directly. So my time at the Tanakama. Now let's go on to the fourth category. What's the reasoning of the Tanakama? Who said the Amma Mocha Asma in Rabba Mosel Shifak Ninus? We said there's a special puzzle that um, that, uh, that, that, that that excludes the case of Mocha Asma, somebody who sells himself that he does not receive a Shifka Knainis. Miad Rahmana, because it's a special mute. It says Gavi Mahru Bazin, Imadunov, Yitan Lo Isha. If the master shall give him a wife, low, meaning that he gives him low, only in this pasuk is in um, uh, Mishpatim, um, which deals with a, um, uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, this pasuk is in the, um, uh, is, is, is referring to the case of Mahu Bezdin, which is in Mishpatim, correct? It says that if uh, the master gives him a Shivchak Nainis, which comes to exclude, 
In the case of Mokar Atzmo, somebody who sells himself, which is, of course, the parsha at the end of Sefer Vayikra. The Idach and Rabbi Eliezer would say, no, that the word lo over here doesn't come to exclude a Mokar Atzmo from receiving a Shivcha Kanainis, but rather it means, Vidak lo means Baal Korcho, lo, that you, that, that, that you force the Shivcha Kanainis upon the Evid, even if the Evid says, no, no, I don't want a Shivcha Kanainis. The Idach Tanakama says, no, I don't need lo to teach me Baal Korcho because that I can learn from Mechi Mishne Sakar Sakhir Nafka. The fact that the Evid is referred to as a Sakhir. The time they, as they, it says, Mishnes Kar Sakhir, he gets double. He has to work double the amount of a normal worker. Uh, the Tanya ki Mishnes Kar Sakhir Abadka. Sakhir is what's the, what's the idea of the Mishnah that's a double of a Sakhir that he has to work? Because a Sakhir ain't an Ovid al That a regular worker only has to work during the daytime. And at night he gets he gets time off. He can go to the movies at night. Evid Ivri, Ovid, Bain Bayom, and Bain Malayan. But an Evid Ivri, he has to work both during the day and at night. What's his work at night? That he has to be with this Shifka Knainis in order to bear children for his master. How can it be that you're going to put him to hard labor? You're not going to put him to hard labor during the day and night. It says that he's supposed to have a good time with you. You got to give him food. You got to give him drink. Rabbi Yitzchak, he says, yeah. We're not giving him a hard time at night. He gets to go to sleep up. The idea is that he's going to get, a, you're going to give him a shivka kneinis, whether he likes it or not. A mikan shiraba mosilo shivka kneinis. And uh, therefore, it's considered like he's working at night by bearing children that ultimately are going to belong to the master. The Edoch, Rabbi Leza says, no, he may have I need the word lo um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to teach me um, about korcho, because if I only had kimishnes kar soker, I still would have thought, yeah, you can. Uh, he can work at night. Um, it's okay for him to work at night if he agrees that he's going to accept the Shivka Kneinis. If he says, okay, I want the Shivka Kneinis, you could say, okay, so I'm going to insist that you not use birth control. However, to require him to have a Shivka Kneinis, even if he doesn't want it, I might think not so. That's why I need even but it doesn't necessarily come to exclude a mocher atzmo from receiving a shivka knainis. But again, we pass can like the Tanakama, only machu bezin receives a shivka knainis, not a mocher atzmo. The Laman Tana so fine. So we said, we can't prove from here that the Tanakama is the one who doesn't hold by the Gzeva Shavu Sochir Sochir. Maybe he does hold by the Gzeva Shavu Sochir Sochir between a machu bezin and mocher atzmo, but he had a special mutim to show that these various four rules only applied it to either Machu Bezdin or only applied to Mokher Atzmo. So that, therefore, was not the Tana who didn't hold like the Gzeva Shavu. So who's the Tana? We'll try a second time. The Laman Tana, the Loyal of Sochim, Sochim, Hai Tana. It must be the following Tana. The Tanya, Meshava Mishpachto Vigomer. It says that the Yoyvo year, that's the day Evid has to go free. So I'm Rabbi Yezim and Yaakov. So Rabbi Yezim and Yaakov says, no, what are we talking about over here? Um, so he says, if we're talking about um, the, the uh, case of a rape, my custom and that, even Mokar Atzmo, we're talking about somebody who sold himself into slavery, Haray Kfar Amor. So it is already um, written, Achnasa Yovel Yavodi Moch, that he goes free during the Yovel year. The Gemara doesn't quote the Pasuk, but Rashi gives you the Pasuk. Even Nirza Haray Kfar Amor. We're talking about somebody who had his ear pierced by the door in order to continue working after the sixth year of service. So I already have a Pasuk that says that he works until the Yovu year. What's the Pasuk? We'll tell you a little bit later. So this Pasuk of Bishava Mishpachto must be talking about El Bemachru Bezdin. It's talking about somebody who was sold by a Bezdin. We know he goes free after six years, but now it's only two or three years after he was sold and the Yobel year hits. So we learn from Meshavah Mishpachto that even a Machu Bezdin goes free in the Yobel year. However, why do I need this special limut to teach me that the Yobel sets him free? If I already know that a Mocher Atzma goes free with the Yobel year because it says, and I have the Xerah Shavah, Sacher, Sacher, then I could just say what applies to one applies to the other. Um, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. The Sacher, Daitek, Yolif, Sacher, Sacher, Lamali, Nelev, Sacher, Sacher. So therefore, this must be the time of the Yezim Yaakov, who doesn't hold by Sacher, Sacher. So I'm of Nachman by Yitzchak. No, it could be the Olam Yolif, Sacher, Sacher. He does hold by the Xerah Shavah of Sacher, Sacher. The Yitzchak. But nonetheless, I need this special limit. I need this special possible. 
of the shav el mishpachto. Why? I might have thought there's a reason to differentiate in this case between a mocher atzma and machu bez. Mocher atzma is law of the sewer. Person sells himself into slavery. He's not somebody who had done it in Avera. He's not somebody who had stolen a machu bez. The person who sold by bez, he's only sold by bez in Bignev also in order to pay back a debt that was created when he stole money from somebody. So Avera is a ganav. So I might think the ganav. Money constantly, I'm not going to let him go free during the Yovel year, especially if he hasn't yet served six years. Tomash Mulan, that even he goes free, and that's why I need a special limit. So I'm a mar. So what did we say before? We said, I don't need the Pasuk of the Shavu Mishpachto to teach me that a Nirza goes free during the Yovel year, because I already have a Pasuk that teaches me that. Even Nirza Rekva Amor. What is the Pasuk by Nirza that teaches me that he goes free um, at the time of the Yovel year? The time because it says Bishaptem with respect to the Yoivim. It says with respect to Yoivim and Parshas Behar, Bishaptem Isha Lachusa Sovi Shamishpachto, that uh, they all go back. Tashuvu, Mama Kasum Midabir. Who is it talking about? Even Mokar Atzmo Rekba Amr. I don't need to tell me that during the over year the Mokar Atzmo goes home because I have the Pasa Kachinasa Yobel, Yabori Mach. How in Machu Bez did a Rekba Amr? If it's talking about the case of Machu Bez, then so I just derived in the passage above. Bishav El Mishpachto. Is talking about Machu Bezdin. I ain't accustomed to Midabis. So this pasuk of Bishav the Misha Lachuz also must be talking about Ela Ben Nir. So Shtayim Mishol Shanu Pnei Yoyva. Even if he only had his ear pierced two or three years before the Yoyva, she Yoyva Motzio that the Yoyva will let him go free. So my mashma. So how do I derive that from this pasuk that it's referring to the Nir? So so I'm a Rava Bashela I'm a Kra Ish. Because it says, "V'shavtim ish elachuzaso, ezu dava shenoeg the ish." What is a law that would apply only to a man? Ve'ein noeg the ish, and it does not apply to a woman. Ve'omer zuritzia. So we said that this only applies as as no and not as not, right? Um, that it only applies to a, a male slave. Only a male slave mm-hmm. can go into remain in servitude after six years. Um, for um, for for a long time afterwards by having his ear pierced. But that's not something that we do with respect to females. So since this is something that only applies to males, it must be referring to a nirza. We see the nirza goes free at the Yovo year. Even though it says, Bavadoli Olam, that he works forever, it doesn't mean forever. He still goes free during the Yovo year. Bitzrik Lemekta Machu Bezin, Bitzrik Lemekta Nirza. And I need the Torah to have a special pasuk to teach me who somebody who's sold by a Bezin goes free at the Yovo year. And a slave who's a nirza also goes free in the Yovo year. Diash bin Machu Bezin, Mishungo Matai Zimne. Because if I would have had the case of Machu then so I would have said, okay, he hasn't yet served a full six years yet. Um, so therefore, that's why I need a special pasuk. If he would have served for six years, he would have gone free for that reason. But Nirza, the Matai Zimne, but Nirza, who already had worked for more than um for more than six years, um, um so 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 therefore I might say So I'm going to um I'm going to give him a knas because of the fact that, that he insisted on remaining a slave for more than the six-year term that, that he had otherwise been given, and therefore he violated ki avadayim, below avadim lavadim, that he's making himself a slave more than is strictly absolutely necessary. So therefore, I need to teach the Pasuk, nonetheless, we'll let him go free of the Yovulia. Biyash mina nirza. And if I would have only learned that nirza goes free of the Yovulia, mishum the avad leishesh, because he already served six years. So rachub ezn lo avad leishesh, he hasn't yet served his six-year term yet. So Ema Lo, so I might think that he should not go free in the Yovel year. Sricha, therefore I need both Pusukim. And with respect to a Nirza who goes free, so I need to have the Pasuk that teaches me so that he goes free in the Yovel year. I need to also need the Pasuk that says it sounds like he works that he as a slave forever. If I only would have had the word Leolam, have a meaning Leola Mamish. I might have thought that forever means really forever, even past the over year. So Kasa Rahman of Shaftim, that therefore the Torah teaches me no, the over year he goes to me. Because of Rahman Shaftim, the Torah would have only said Bishaftim, have a meaning I might have thought that that's only if he has not yet worked the four um for six um uh, for, for six years. Abal Hecha the Ava Chesh. However, if let's say he was a Nirza and now he worked for a full six years. So I might think that he doesn't stay at all until the Oval year. 
Did he just goes free just like he went would have gone free before he was in the earth, say after six years? So after he's in the earth, so also he goes free for six years. So I would have thought that Oloye Sofa Koma Mitchilaso, just another six years. Matskilaso Shesh have Sofa Nami Shesh. The Mashmal on the Olam. No, no, no. It's more than six years. It's going to be for a Yoibo. You say forever when you're talking about a Yoibo. The Olam will show Yoibo for the universe, um, for the entire period of time, forever, um, that the Jubilee year lasts, which is a forever cycle. Um, at least within the Ovil, you go until the very end of the Ovil before the Nirza gets to go free. So fine. So we tried a second time to figure out who the Tana was. It doesn't hold by the Gzei Roshava of Sakir Sakir. We thought it might be Rebel Yezim and Yaakov, and we said, no, um, we need a special Limud in this case because otherwise I would have differentiated between a Mokar Asma and Mahu Bezin. So now we're going to try a third time. I'm going to try a third time to figure out who is this mysterious Tana who doesn't know by the Xerah Shava between Mokar Atzma, Mokru Bezin, or Sakir Sakir? So we say, Rebbe, oh, I must be Rebbe. The Tanya, because the Brisa says, if you have a, a Jewish slave who sold to a non Jew, so then there is a special din that he can be redeemed. He can be redeemed by family members. Family members. So it says, and if he's not redeemed with family by, by, by family members, so then he goes free during the Oval year. So Rebbe Omer, so Rebbe says that when you have a Jewish slave who sold to a non-Jew, so he only goes free if he's redeemed with money by relatives, but he does not go free. We can't force the non-Jewish captor, the non-Jewish master, to free him after six years. That's only if there's a Jewish master, not if there's a non-Jewish master. Shioko, because I might have thought otherwise it's a Kizei Roshava. Balo dinu, uma misheinu nigal be'ela, nigal be'shesh somebody who is a Jewish slave who sold to a regular Jew, so then he's only allowed to redeem himself. It's not good enough if he's redeemed by relatives. That's only a special din that Torah tells us with respect to somebody who sold to a non-Jew. Um, but nonetheless, he goes free after six years. The Jew, there's the Jewish slave who is in the um, captivity of a, the Jewish master. But this fellow, the Jewish slave who sold to a non-Jew, who can be redeemed through relatives paying off paying off the non-Jewish master. So I'd say Kavachomer, that this fellow should be able to go free from the non-Jewish master after six years. So Tama Loma says, Rebbe, that's why I have the special Gezei Roshava, not the Gezei Roshava, I have the special Limud of the Eila, the Eila who nigav, that he is redeemed only through the ransom money of the relatives. But he doesn't go free after six years. So we say, wait a second. But if Rebbe would really hold by this Gzei Roshav of Sachir Sachir, here I also have a Gzei Roshav of Sachir Sachir Sachir. Because I have the wording of Sachir who also with respect to a Jewish slave who sold to a non-Jewish master. It says, Kizchir Shana Bishana Yeimo. So I have Sachir over there as well. So he's like a dietic, the other Sakir Sakir. So if Sakir Sakir enables me to derive Xay Rashava, I Mokar Atzma Mahu Bezin, it should also enable me to derive Xay Rashava between a Jew who sold to a Jew and a Jew who sold to a non-Jew, because I have Sakir in both places. So am I comer, umami shenu niga beela. So why does it say that um somebody who uh, if I have a Jew who sold to a regular Jew, he can't be redeemed by relatives? Let him be redeemed by relatives, just like he's allowed to be redeemed by relatives. If he sold to a non-Jew. So I'm of Nachum by Yitzchak. So Nachum Yitzchak says, no, I don't have a proof with respect to Rebbe either. It could be the Rebbe is of the opinion that we normally would derive of but here I have a special that says that when it is that we allow relatives to redeem the Jewish slave who was sold to a non-Jewish master, um, that's only something that's a special din with respect to a Jewish slave who's in the hands of a non-Jewish master. Shiny because the Pasik says only the Yigalenu, Ododo, Ovendodo Yigalenu, um only this fellow can be redeemed by his uncle or his cousin. but not with respect to anybody else. So therefore, it ends up, according to the Gemara, we don't really have, um, at least today, anybody who we've uh, definitively identified is not holding by the Gzei Roshav as Sakir We know there's a Tana out there, but we haven't definitively, definitively identified who he is. So let's go on with respect to this discussion. 
Uman Tana, we said, Rebbe says, Beilu nigav e nigav that uh, this uh, fellow who sold to a non-Jewish master can be redeemed by relatives and doesn't go free after six years. So who argues with him? Who argues with him? Uman Tana de Pali Galea, but the Rebbe, uh, who argues with Rebbe? So we say, uh, we have two individuals who argue and they would hold that even a, a Jewish slave who sold to a non-Jewish master would go free after six years. So those two Tanaim are Rabbi Yossi Aglili and Rabbi Akiva. The Tanya, because they don't derive the Ela to teach me the din of Rebbe that he doesn't go free after six years. They teach me, they use Be'ela to teach me a differentiation between somebody who's redeemed by relatives and somebody who's redeemed mm -hmm. by, uh, by, by non-related third parties. The Tanya in the Bryce says, Lo yigea Be'ela, Rabbi Yossi Aglili uses Be'ela to teach me this following. Ome Be'ela l'shichur. If he's redeemed by relatives, he goes free. B'shakul Adam, if other people redeem him, guess what? They get to keep him themselves as slave, as a slave. But then he'll go free after six years, you know, in their employ. Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, surprisingly, if you have the relatives redeem him, so the relatives get to keep him as a slave. But if it's other people who redeem him, so then he up uh, so then he goes, uh, so then he goes free. Now, the truth of the matter is that, that according to the, the Shita of the Chachamim, who would not agree Rabbi Yosef Lili and, 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 and Rabbi Akiva and wouldn't use Be'ela for this purpose, including Rabbi, so they would say, whoever redeems him, he's going to go free. But according to Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Yosef Lili, Be'ela teaches me that we differentiate. We don't hold like either one of them, but we'll discuss their reasoning. My time with Rabbi Yosef Aglili, what's the reasoning of Rabbi Yosef Aglili? Amakra, imlo yigael Be'ela. So Be'ela means, okay, Eleva Acher. Um, that if the person, so how does the Pasuk read? If the person is not redeemed by his um, by his relative, but rather the implication is he's redeemed by somebody else, so then he goes free during the Yovo year. Otherwise, otherwise, he would go free um, after, um, after the, uh, he would go free right away. He would go free as soon as he's redeemed. Rabbi Akiva, oh man, Rabbi Akiva says, no. Im lo yigael ele be'ele. That in the that Leo no Yigel Be'ela means if he is uh, re, if he's not redeemed um, except through these individuals who are related to him, so then so then he's going to be in the captivity of the relatives who redeemed him, and he's going to remain with them until the Yovo year. But he's not going to go free. He'll only go free if other people redeem him. Rabbi Yosef, if, uh, this should say for Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, me the Ela Be'ela. What do you mean? You're adding a word to the pasuk. The Pasuk doesn't say Be'ela, it says Lo Yigel Be'ela. It doesn't say Lo Yigel Ela Be'ela. Ela Be'ha'i Karkim Yipogi. It must be that really what they're disagreeing about is the following uh, Pasuk. It's true they don't agree with Rebbe about how Be'ela is interpreted, but with this machlokis that they have regarding uh, whether uh, the, the, the who exactly gets to go free when they're redeemed and who has to, re and in what case uh, the Evid would remain in, in bondage, um, is based on a different a derivation of a different puzzle. Because what is it, or, or a different part of the puzzle? Because it says, O do do, O ben do do, yigalenu, right? So the puzzle says that he's redeemed by his uncle or his cousin, right? Zegulas kovim. So it's pretty clear that's referring to when he's redeemed by his relatives. Then the puzzle goes on to say, O he siga yado, that he can also find the money himself to redeem himself. Zegulas atzmo. Look, that's if he is redeeming himself. Benigo, um, and then it says, Venigal, he's redeemed. Why do I need the extra word, Venigal? Zugulas acherim. That's talking about when other people redeem him. So Rabbi Yossi Aglili Sav, a mikvah nidrash lefanov, that um, since it uh, says uh, that we go backwards, we know that if it's Hisiga he, Yado, certainly if he is going to redeem himself, obviously that's for the purpose of Shikra or going free. Um, so, oh, Hisiga Yado. Is the din of Isiga Yado applicable to what follows or what came before? So he says it only is applicable to what comes before. Mikma Nidrash Lefana. So Shadi Gulas Kovim Agulas Atmos. Since before his own redemption, Bisiga Yado, we mentioned the redemption of relatives, Odo Do, Vendo Do, you can let us be the same din. Magulas Aslan Shikh, whoever redeems himself, he goes free. Agulas Kovim Shikh, or his relatives redeem him, he goes free. Babi Kiva Savar, Kiva says, no. When we darsh and we darsh and going, we, we, we darsh and not going backwards, but we darsh and going forward. We look at what follows. Mikma nidrash le'achara, that says, he siga yado, if he redeems himself, we know he goes free. Then it says, venigo. Venigo is referring to if he's redeemed by non relatives. So therefore, shadi gulas acheira gulas asum. We'd apply the same din if he's redeemed by others as if he would redeem himself. Magulas asum, shikha, redeems himself, he goes free. Agulas acheira, shikha, 
redeemed by other people, it goes to free. But not if he's redeemed by relatives, then he remains in bondage with those relatives. So then, if they're really deriving from the other past, from the, this other past, that's Pasuk Memtes in Parachapen Vayikra. So then, what do they do with Be'ela in Pasuk Nandala? We say they're not Darshan Be'ela like Rebbe. Yachi Be'ela Lamali. So we say, no, Ila Be'ela, if not for the word of Be'ela, so I would have thought that I would Darshan the Pasuk both in terms of what came before and what came afterwards. Be'ela teaches me that I split it up. That there are only some, there's only one type of redemption where he goes free, and a different type of redemption where he doesn't go free. Haven't been a mikra nitrash ben lefana ben lefana ben lefana ben lefana ben lefana um, so then we say, So then we have um, the, the uh, if it, they both really agree that as a general rule, I would dash in what comes before and what comes uh, afterwards. So then I have the kasha again, according to uh, Rabbi Akiva, um, how does it uh, follow that that, uh, the, um, that I'm going to um, uh, say that uh, when a relatives uh, redeem the person, um, uh, that uh, somehow it's going to be worse that the person should be made in bondage. So we say if they're arguing bisvara, ela bisvara can be palgi. Rabbi Yosi aglili sover that since I have to include one person's going to go for one type of redemption, the person's going to go free. The other type of redemption, the person's going to remain in bondage. They both learn that from beila. So he says that uh, this. Uh, so I figure out which is which based on svara. Mistab agulas lachem l'shibu. If I have uh, other people, so then it makes more sense that they would get to keep this Jewish slave for themselves for whatever period until six years and so forth. Yeah. The other is the shikor, because if I say that it's for the purpose of going free, I mean, I park you there. then they're never going to redeem him. They'll say, I, we don't know this person from Adam. He's not our relative. Why should we do him any favors? If we're going to redeem him, let us keep him on as a slave ourselves. Rabbi Kiva, sober. Rabbi Kiva says, no, the reverse is true. the if it's the relatives who redeem the person, they should get to keep him as bondage because otherwise a person will take advantage of the goodwill of their relatives. The army is the shikhar. If you say that they have to free him, <clears throat> so we know everybody has a bad apple in their family. <laughs> the guy is going to constantly get money by selling himself into slavery and he knows that he's always going to be redeemed. He's going to be bailed out by his relatives. But <laughs> So he says this a whole this, this differentiation between relatives and non-relatives who redeem is only true according to these two tonight. The Chachamim say that Hakol the Shikhar, that whether the slave who's Jewish slave who's sold to a non-Jewish master is redeemed by relatives or by non-relatives, guess what? He always goes free. That's how the Raman Paskins. Man Chachamim, who are the Chachamim? We said earlier. That's Rebbe, because Rebbe uses Be'ela for a totally different purpose. He doesn't say that it's a, it differentiates between different individuals that might redeem him. Rebbe, the Ma'afik Le'la Hai Be'ela, because he uses Be'ela to teach me a different drasha, that the Jew who sold to a non-Jewish master goes free only by the redemption of relatives and not after six years. Be'ela drasha achmino, mikra nidrash ben lefano of ben l'akwa, and the mikra of the Pasuk that says that he goes free, or he yado, that would be true whether he's um, redeemed by himself or by relatives, whether by non-relatives. Okay. So according to Rebbe, that he always goes free in that, that uh, whether he's redeemed by relatives or non-relatives, he's always going to go free. So what is it to teach me when it says, he's going to go free if he's redeemed. So it teaches me that if he's not redeemed, I would have thought that maybe um, he would, I, it teaches me the nature of the Jewish slave who's sold into a non Jewish, the captivity of a non Jewish master, that he actually goes free during the Shnasa Yovah. What's the nature of uh, this uh, slave? It must be talking about an who who's under your dominion. You're in charge of the country, mm-hmm. you're in sovereign control, and the Ovi is subject to your laws. Maybe the Pasuk is talking about it. No, it's not subject to your dominion. So you say, oh, Miss, no. Um, that you wouldn't be able to force the non-Jew to let him go free in the Yobel year. That's not part of their legal system. So therefore, it teaches me that, that, this, uh, that these Psukim are only talking about a case of a non-Jewish master who's under your dominion. Um, uh, and that even though he's under your, your dominion, you have no right to, to uh, forcibly um, eject the, the, the Jewish slave from under his control. We say that 
You have to treat him nicely. He's playing according to the rules. He, he bought this and uh, this Jewish slave with money, and therefore you have to allow him to keep the Jewish slave unless he's redeemed up until the Yovo year. We'll stop here. Okay.